At first glance, Kong may look like any other drum machine you've used in the past, but it is a little bit more complex in nature than most drum machines, and the thing to get your head around is the interface. When you first load Kong up, you're presented with this initial screen that's really just 16 pads, and this entire section of the interface concentrates on how the pads play back, how you use them, and which pads you trigger. There's a whole section, though, that can be opened by clicking this Show Drum and Effects button here, and this is really concentrating on our sound generators, our effects, and the routing of the effects. This is only really needed when you're editing a drum patch or when you're actually designing a drum sound. So a lot of the time when you're just programming, this can be folded away. Now, if you're a Reason user, you'll be pretty used to this sort of interface as a lot of their previous devices have this two-part interface. So quickly looking at the pad section, these 16 pads can be played back by simply clicking on them or via a MIDI keyboard. They can also be played back by the sequencer. As we saw at the end of the introduction in the previous section. Now this window to the left here is called the drum control panel. And this really just gives us the main parameters for every pad. So if we select a pad, you can see you've got the level, pan and tone, effect sends, pitch and decay, really simple parameters, but very useful for quick access. On the right here, all our other pad settings are present. And these are quite in depth and reasonably complex, but don't worry because each one of these sections will be covered in its own video. Again, this lower section is very complex, and has a lot of options for different sound generators, different effects, and different routings. But don't worry, as I said before, this will all be covered in separate videos.